Hi and welcome to another edition of Math with Mr. Douglas. Today we are taking a look at the exciting topic of multiplying and dividing fractions. Yes, are you ready to get at it? Here we go. Let's just get to it. Let's have a good talk about fractions and today we are going to be specifically looking at multiplying and dividing. And we have a special guest today. We have our infamous math slug. So here's our little math slug. And today he is going to be rocking a blue hat. Yes, a blue hat. He felt like today was going to be kind of a blue hat kind of day like this. And you know what? He's in a pretty good mood today. So he's pretty happy. And so happy he's going like, woohoo, we're doing multiplying and dividing. All right, so uh, let's, let's just get to it. So we're talking about multiplying. There's some things I want you to think about. I want you to think about simplifying a fraction. And I want you to think about uh, cross reducing. So what am I talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Here we go. Let's say you had a classic fraction of 10 over uh, 12, and we multiplied it by an even awesomer fraction. Awesomer is a word. And we're going to say that fraction is 3 sevenths. Okay, 3 sevenths like that. Okay, first, always look at the fraction individually and say, can I? So look at the fraction individually and say, could I reduce this one? Could I actually simplify it? And what does simplifying really mean? Well, that means I'm going to go and divide the top and the bottom by the same number. Um, a good rule of thumb is just to see if it can be divided by 2 or 3. Those are the ones that usually do the simplifying. So 2s or 3s. This is totally divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide it by 2. And this is now going to be 5, 6. It's the exact same value. It's just a little bit smaller. OK. And then our 3 7 we can't do any kind of simplifying there. But now I want you to cross reduce. So when you're cross reducing, you're looking like on an x like this and asking yourself, is there any numbers that you could divide into both of those? Well, for three and six, absolutely. You could divide it by three and divide this one by three. And if you did that, see how I cross it. I, cr I literally cross it out. Three divided by three is one and three divided by, or sorry, six divided by three is two. So what's my new question now? My new question, my new question is now 5 over, uh, that's going to be 2 times 1 over 7. Now these numbers are a lot easier to work with, aren't they, math slug? Yes, they are. So when you do that, you end up getting 5 times 1. Remember, we multiply across the top and we multiply across the bottom. So we're going across, across the top and across cross the bottom we multiply. So we're doing that right here. So 5 times 1 is just going to give us 5 and 2 times 7 is going to give us 14. Ask yourself, could I simplify this anymore? Right? Is there any numbers that we could divide? And math slug says no. So your answer is 5 fourteenths. Well then what about dividing? Let's take a look at that. And there's some basic rules when we're talking about dividing. And I'm going to put it in kids terms. You want to flip the second fraction. And when you flip it, what you're actually doing is um, using the reciprocal. The reciprocal. That's a great word, reciprocal. Uh, you're, you're flipping the second one, and then you're actually multiplying. That's really what you're doing. So, let's get to it, shall we? Yeah! All right. So, what if we had 5 sixths divided by, oh, I don't know, let's do 2 thirds. So, 5 sixths divided by 2 thirds. I just said that we need to flip the second, so we're going to flip this one. And we're going to change this to a multiplying. So, what it ends up becoming is 5 six times 3 halves. Remember, 3 halves is the reciprocal of 2 thirds. Well, we're going to go back to our awesome idea of multiplying now. So we're going to actually cross-reduce. So I'm going to divide both of these by 
um, three. I'm going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. So I'm going to get five times one and two times two. And that is going to give me an answer of five over four. Some people like to call that one and one quarter, but not Mr. Douglas. He likes to keep it as five fourths because that makes life 10 times easier. Let's look at a couple of other examples. Maybe it's like maybe one more example. Because I do want to show you uh, one that does kind of come up a little bit is when you have multiple dividing. So let's just say you had, ooh, let's, let's, let's throw a couple of different concepts. Let's go three and two thirds. I love three and two thirds. And let's go and times this by, ooh, I don't know. Let's go by nine tenths. Nine tenths, that sounds exciting. And I'm going to divide it by, I don't know, a half. And also divide that by three quarters. Like that. OK, so first things first, let's go and change this into an improper fraction. So that would become 11 over 3. We still have this multiplying by that 9 over 10. Hopefully you're getting excited and saying, oh my gosh, I can cross reduce. I'm going to change this to multiplying. And I'm going to flip this to 2 over 1. And I'm also going to times th turn that into like a multiplying and turn that over 4 over 3. Now, I'm going to do some awesome cross reducing now. I want to do some special cross reducing just to make a very, very interesting point. Okay. So I'm going to cross reduce. Now you might be looking at this and saying, I know where you can cross reduce. 3 and 9. And you could also cross reduce 2 and 10. You absolutely could. But I want to show off some math skills here. And the math skills I want to show off is that you can cross reduce like this. Yes, you can cross reduce all the way across. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to go and divide that 3 and 9 by 3. So make that out 1. And this turns into a 3. I'm also going to go and cross reduce. I'm going to cross reduce this 4 and this 10 way over there. What? That's right. I'm going to make this divide it by 2 and divide this by 2 and make it a 5. Is there anything else we can do? Why, there sure is. How about the 3 and the 3? So I can change this into a 1 and this into a 1. Is there anything else that we could do? I don't think so. So what's my new equation look like? It looks like this. 11 over 1 times 1 over 5 times 2 over 1 times another 2 over 1. Well, that is not too bad to do. We're going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. And what do we end up getting? 11 times 1 times 2 times 2. So I think that's 22 times 2, which is going to be uh, 44 over 5. Or you might want to say 8. What is that? 8 and 4 fifths, I believe. But you know, I prefer that one. All right, there's multiplying and dividing. Ready? And until next time, have fun doing math. Cheers.